What's, What's up, up explorers? explorers? Welcome back to our channel. We're the Choose here from Choose to Explore, where we teach you guys how to see the world. Save a dollar. So we just came from a bucket list experience here in Peru. Six days of nonstop adventure. But today what we're gonna talk about is everything you need to know about Machu Picchu, an official guide. So in this video, we're gonna be giving you guys three things. The cheapest way to get to Machu Picchu, exclusive tips, and our experience. So stay tuned, you guys don't wanna miss this video. So Machu Picchu is one of the seven wonders of the world, and for good reason. One thing that really surprised me was how expensive it is to go to Machu Picchu and to experience it. So comparative to everything we did in Peru, Machu Picchu was a lot more expensive. But today we're gonna to show you guys how you can save on your experience in Machu Picchu. So the first thing to know is that Machu Picchu is so beautiful. It's hidden in the mountains. And because it's in the mountains, it's not the easiest place to get to. So most people when they come to Peru, they fly into Lima. Machu Picchu is actually in Cusco, which is a separate city. And this flight is only about an hour and a half long. And some airlines that we saw that fly this route include Sky, Latam, and JetSmart. JetSmart. So on our first flight from Lima to Cusco, we flew with JetSmart, and that flight was $28 per person. And on the way back from Cusco back to Lima, we flew with Sky Airlines, and that was $29. So both of our tickets were about $30 one way per person. So our experience on both of these airlines were relatively good. So both of these airlines, we bought the most basic economy ticket, and that included just a personal item. So if you want to save money on these flights, you're going to want to pack in just a personal item. So we have an entire article that gives you tips on how to do just that, and it's linked in the description below. For all my people who are heavy packers and who this may be difficult for, I may recommend you just getting an accommodation in Lima and just keeping it the whole time and leaving your stuff there, or talking to the host of the accommodation and ask if you can just leave some of your suitcase or your luggage behind in Lima. This will work if you're planning to fly back to your country from Lima, but if you're leaving from Cusco, please don't leave your stuff in Lima. <laughs> so as soon as you land in Cusco, the first thing you're gonna realize is the difference in altitude. So coming from Lima, which is about at sea level, to then go to Cusco, which is how high I live. So Cusco is over 11,000 feet high, and over, which is over 3,000 meters. So with the high altitude, that means that there is less oxygen in the air, meaning it's harder to breathe. And this can translate to altitude sickness, which can result in headache, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, hard to breathe, it's not fun. <laughs> and fatigue when you want to do things. So simple activities are a lot more difficult in higher altitudes. But the good news is that there are several remedies and things that you can do to help with altitude sickness. So before we landed, we actually took some medication that we got in Lima in order to help with the altitude sickness. Also when we landed, there was a lot of people trying to sell coca tea. Liv went to a restaurant and had Muna tea. And there's a lot more remedies that we talk about in our Peru travel guide, so check that out if you guys want that information as well. But the region of Cusco is so large that just because you made it to Cusco doesn't actually mean that you're close to Machu Picchu just yet. You're actually pretty far away. <laughs> So there are many different ways to get to Machu Picchu. Some ways are cheaper than others, and some ways are easier than others. But the purpose of this video is to show you guys how you can save on this journey to Machu Picchu. So the first way to get to Machu Picchu is the good Incan way, and that is a hike through the mountains, the good old Andes Mountains. <laughs> so the most famous, popular, and traditional way is the Inca Trail. Now this is a four day, three night trek through the Andes Mountains. Because this is so popular, Unfortunately, there's only 500 permits given out every single day, and that includes the guides and the people who carry the equipment with you guys. This one should definitely be booked way in advance. I'm talking about months in advance, especially during high season. The other trek is the Salkanti Trail. This one is a lot less popular and even longer than the Inca Trail. My brother actually did this one and it was a five day, five night trek through the Andes Mountains. Now the Salkanti Trail, while it is longer, does make a stop at one of the famous spots, which is the Humante Lake. Now my brother went there and this is one of the spots that we didn't get to on our Cusco trip, but I highly recommend doing it as well. So technically the hikes could be the cheapest option, but you do have to factor in the cost of food, accommodation, equipment, guides, all of those extra things while you hike. So while this is an amazing experience, it definitely can be more expensive than some of the other options we're gonna talk about as well. The next way that I'm gonna talk about is a lot cheaper, but it's not really accessible to foreigners. You can take a local train that normally takes about eight hours to get from Cusco to close by to Machu Picchu town. 
Now, this is a local price, but I don't really want to touch on it too much because as foreigners, we can't really ride on that train. So scrap that one out. But that is the cheapest way to get there. So now we'll get into the way that we did it that was a lot easier and well connected. So from Cusco, we took a bus to Ollante Tambo, which is really the sacred valley. Oyante Tambo is really the gateway to Machu Picchu. So then from Oyante Tambo, we took a train to Machu Picchu town, which is also called Aguas Calientes. Or hot water. And there's two main companies that run these routes. You have the Inca Rail and the Peru Rail. So while I was talking about the local routes being a longer, cheaper route, these are for foreigners and they're a lot quicker and a lot more expensive as well. So from our experience, there are a lot of different ways that you can save on these train tickets. So the best part about the bus and the train is that booking with either Inca Rail or Peru Rail, you can get the bus and the train included in one ticket. And they'll direct you through just to make sure that you won't miss your bus or your train. So just make sure that you're there on time and I highly recommend booking them together, the train and the bus ticket. So the most expensive part of your Machu Picchu experience can easily be the train. The day that we were going to Machu Picchu, we checked in to see if we can go on an earlier ticket and they quoted us for a same day ticket at $126 per person one way. In actuality, we only paid $86 per person for a round trip ticket, which is still more expensive than I wanted to pay, but that's what it costs to go to Machu Picchu. So we're going to give you three ways that you can save on your train ticket. The first way is to book in advance. We booked in February for a July trip. So by booking in advance, we took advantage of a promotional offer that came up on the website. So I'm unsure of what the promotional offer is or when they give them out, but we saw it pop up on the screen and that ticket was a lot cheaper than the other tickets. So when you guys do look to book your ticket, please try to take advantage of those promotional offers because it'll save you a lot. So the next way you can save is by comparing the Inca Rail versus the Peru Rail. So while these two train systems have different products, they essentially both do the same thing. They get you to Machu Picchu. So if saving you money is important, then it don't really matter which one gets you there. Go with the cheapest one. And the third way to save money on your train ticket is to consider the time of day that you go. So we were all about saving money, so we actually got the cheapest time of day to go, which happened to be after the sun set. We didn't really mind because it was the end of the day and after a long travel day, we just slept on the train. But just be cognizant that the later you go, the less likely you can see the mountains and I hear that sunset during Machu Picchu is an amazing view. So if you are a little budget conscious, maybe going one way, you go during sunset and coming back, you already seen it so you can go late at night when the sun already set. I also saw some cheaper tickets early in the morning, so maybe you can do that as well if you don't mind getting up early. But any way you can save, just search through the days. If you're there for a six day trip, search every single day for the cheapest day and plan your itinerary around Machu Picchu. Now as soon as you have your train ticket, the next thing I recommend you buying is your Machu Picchu entrance ticket. This is because there's very limited amount of tickets that are given for each time slot and they are very strict about the time slot that you're giving. They will not let you in until it's your specific time slot. But we're here a little bit early. Um, our time is at 10 o'clock because we hear it's really good for the sunlight and the sun is out as you can see. Um, but it's like 9.50 right now and um, we have to wait. They are really strict about the times you enter. So we are just gonna wait here until 10 to go in. And from the time your time slot begins, you only have one hour to enter Machu Picchu. And once your time is gone, it's gone. The entrance ticket itself was $41 per person. And unfortunately, I haven't found a way to save on that, but maybe if you're a national, it's cheaper. So now you're here in Aguas Calientes, which is Machu Picchu town, and we highly recommend you staying at night here before going to Machu Picchu. And this is because, as we stated, it's a long journey to get here, to dealing with the altitude sickness, probably starving, and long modes of transportation. If you're gonna do all of that to get to Machu Picchu, you might as well really enjoy your experience. It's one of the seven wonders of the world, so take your time and go through it. Don't rush through Machu Picchu. So there are so many great and affordable places to stay around Machu Picchu town, and we've included over 25 stays in our Explore Peru travel guide that's linked in the description. Also included in that guide is a lot of great restaurants that are affordable, local Peruvian eats as well. So I highly recommend checking that out as well. So we found accommodations for under $20 a night, and those included breakfast as well. So that's another way that you can save in Machu Picchu, just getting a place that has breakfast. So you're here in Machu Picchu town, but you're not actually in Machu Picchu. To get to Machu Picchu, I'm sorry, it's more of a journey. So the most popular way, which we did, 
was take a bus. So as a foreigner, it's $12 to get from Aguas Calientes to Machu Picchu entrance. And then it's also $12 to get back. So $24 round trip in order to do that. And you can get your bus ticket right there in the main town. Just be sure to bring your passport and you can pay with cash or card. So we just got up here, we took the bus, and the buses leave like every two minutes or so. Yeah, and definitely. So there might be a long line, but a lot of people are coming groups, so they might call you out if you're only two people or one person, and you can go ahead with them. Yeah, so we were in the back of the line, but we also just went all the way to the front because it was just the two of us. Yes, because they called us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we didn't just cut the line. <laughs> So if you do want to save $24, then one thing that I can recommend is hiking up from Aguas Calientes to the entrance of Machu Picchu. So going up there is about a two hour hike. And I know I said at Cusco the elevation is about 11,000 feet, but at Machu Picchu in Aguas Calientes, it drops down to maybe about 8,000 feet. Just under that. So it may be a little bit easier to walk than it is in Cusco. But just be mindful that after we went to Machu Picchu, we were tired. So I maybe recommend going up and taking a bus back, but you do what works for you and see the world save a dollar however you choose. So Machu Picchu outside of the front entrance does not have bathrooms, so you have to use them before. Because they say on average it takes about two to three hours to go through, so either hold it or use it right when you get here. So after all those steps, you finally made it to Machu Picchu. Woohoo! <laughs> so now it's time to consider whether or not you're gonna go with a guide. So I know online it said that guides are mandatory and necessary, but from our experience, a guide was not mandatory. We saw a lot of people who did not have a guide the entire trip. So we initially decided that we did not want to get a guide in Machu Picchu and we were just going to see the ruins for what it is. But we're so happy and grateful that we decided to join a group and our guide was Miguel and he was amazing. We actually have Miguel's information in our Explore Peru travel guide, so check that out as well. So now that you guys know all of the tips to get to Machu Picchu and how to save in Machu Picchu, here's our experience with Machu Picchu. So join us along for that as well. You can't bring a tripod, an umbrella, or play loud music. Yes. So, and also it's a no-fly zone here, so I cannot fly my drone, so you guys will not get that footage today. <laughs> Where? So we're hiking circuit two, and we're going up this way. There was a way you can go either up or down, and our guide recommended that you go up, so we're heading there. We just passed where the Inca Trail leads, which is from Cusco all the way here. It's a five day hike. You know, not built for that one yet. <laughs> and this is cool. You can see these natural steps that they have here to go up from one area to another. So as you guys can see here, they have llamas and the llamas are here to cut the grass and to maintain it. So this is great landscaping right here. <laughs> So the dope part about being in Machu Picchu is that you're surrounded by mountains. So here you have Machu Picchu, you have Huayna Picchu, and you have a bunch of other mountains here, so it's beautiful. And if you guys can see right behind me, we are at the Machu Picchu beautiful viewpoint. And it's crazy because this wasn't discovered, quote unquote, until 1911, with a Yale scientist came here and he was actually looking for El Dorado, the city of gold, but people led him to Machu Picchu and now it's one of the amazing seven wonders of the world. So it was never actually lost. All the locals always knew where it was. And then they led the Yale scientist yes, here. over here and the Spanish actually never found this, so it's amazing to see all of it, how this is preserved for 400 years with nobody around. Um, this is my favorite world wonder. <laughs> <laughs> and if you guys can see, they have different terraces and different layers, and it's because each terrace has a different temperature. So Peru is known for its different species of corn and potatoes, over 3,000 potatoes here and over 300 species of corn, and each one of these these layers is a different um, crop. Yes. 
And right behind me here, you have the Inca Bridge. It's an additional ticket that you gotta buy in order to get there. But I hear it's a beautiful viewpoint. We just didn't pay for it. So right behind us is the only entrance and the only exit into this entire area. So if you want to get into Machu Picchu, you can't sneak out late at night. <laughs> you can't do anything except for come through this way. So They were very secure. <laughs> Tight security. <laughs> the thing here that's really amazing is when you honestly think about how the heck did they move these huge rocks. Like these rocks are so big and they're so heavy and it wouldn't be me to carry them. They were super human. It would be you Liv, right? You carried them? <laughs> of course, I'm strong. <laughs> yeah. Man. All right, so right behind us, you see the Temple of the Sun, and it's amazing here what the Incan people did. Um, unfortunately, it's not finished, um, so some things are still a little rough, but it's still so beautiful and amazing to see. Yes, it's amazing, and all these stones are white granite, which really absorbs the energy of the sun, so I think that's really cool. <laughs> um, the really cool thing about the Temple of the Sun is that one time of the year at the their winter solstice, our summer solstice, summer solstice at, in North America, the sun actually sets right over the rock, right over where the um, Temple of the Sun is. So, really cool to see that. So, right behind me, you guys see this is the royalty, the king's house. And he could only, the kings were polygamous, but where he kept his main chick was right there. That you can tell by how nice it is, it's royalty. But all his side chicks were in that big square over there. So, you know, they, they lived a pretty crazy life for the kings over there. All right, and you can tell that it's still unfinished because they still have these really huge rocks right here behind me. And so before they built anything, there were just a bunch of huge stones like that all throughout here. And they used it to create this ama amazing place. And the crazy thing is, all the rocks that you find here are all the same rock. It's yes. whatever was on the mountain, which is white granite. Yes. So Machu Picchu, white granite. The heaven, the earth, and the ground. That's why there are very important animals. And right behind me is Juana Picchu, which is the big mountain right behind Machu Picchu. If you guys want to do that, you got to book that way in advance. And that is circuit number four. Right behind us is the sacred rock, which is shaped the exact same as the mountain right behind it. And the mountain means duality. I don't remember the name of it, but it translates to duality. And on each side, it's male and female houses that they would come to worship that mountain. There you go. Yeah. So the Incans were very grateful for everything that they had. So right behind me here, you see the altar. And that's where they would have to come and ask the other mountains for permission to do anything that they wanted to do every single day. So definitely cool to see here. All right, so now we're at Condor Temple and it's, it's really interesting. So pretty much they would have the mummies here for a couple of days and then ultimately they would um, bury them elsewhere before the sun rose because when the sun rises, then their soul can connect off to heaven ultimately. So this is really interesting. <laughs> and if you actually look at it, it has like a face of the condor and then you see the wings coming out to the side. So it's really interesting how they did that. Yeah. And right behind me, if you guys can hear that, that is fresh water running down the mountain coming from Machu Picchu Mountain. And it's just amazing how they created these canals in order to get fresh, uh, fresh water in. The thing that's crazy too is they said if you drink this water, you will never age. Should I try it? You're gonna get a stomach virus, don't do it. It's worth it, <laughs> it's immortality. And here we are. This is actually the last viewpoint in Machu Picchu before the exit. And man, it's been amazing here. All right, and that's it for our time here in Machu Picchu. It was amazing. We had an amazing guide, Miguel, and he showed us so much that I didn't even know or even could think about of the Incan people and culture. So if you guys are ever in Machu Picchu, Cusco, Lee, Peru, use my man Miguel. And you're gonna be here and a good tour guide of this archaeological site. So thank you so much, my friend. Yep. You guys can find them uh, linked in our description here. So thank you guys. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.